Hello and welcome to another video from the only source of information you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today I'm going to be telling you about my teleprompter. That's what's in this little bag right here. It's one of the secrets to my success as a YouTuber. You know, like uh, the video I'm making right now, just off the cuff. I know what I'm talking about. I've been doing this for years. I know kind of what points I want to cover. I don't have to be that precise, but sometimes I'll make videos that are an hour long and they're just me talking. There's no way I can do that without repeating myself over and over again, leaving things out, and uh, being inaccurate. You know, a lot of the stuff I do is very touchy information. It's stuff about uh, religion, about the Bible, about social political events, and people are passionate about that. So if you, you give a one hour talk and you get anybody offended, they're going to go through and pick your talk all to pieces. So I like to have it all written out, check it two or three times after I'm completed with it, and, uh, and make sure that there's nothing that anybody can call into question. They will anyway, but when they do, you just block them. Because if you know you're right and you know you got your facts straight, you don't have to sit there and explain yourself. Anyways, I've got these tripods out because I want to explain something to you. This thing here, after it's all uh, unfolded, it, it's not real heavy, but it's like a sail and a wind will blow over a lightweight tripod, especially you're going to put a camera on here and there's a tray in the front you're going to put an iPod on, or iPad on, and it's going to get pretty heavy and it uh, doesn't take much to knock it over and break everything to pieces. So you can't use one of these lightweight tripods. You have to, you have, to have a heavy one, and uh, not just heavy but tall. I'll explain why. When you uh, when you're using this thing, it's uh, it's got a, a a lot of problems are caused with light, reflections, glare, and so you want to be looking directly into it. You know, you don't want it on a little tripod and have it facing up because anything that's you know any light source is going to hit that screen and, and bounce off and you're not going to be able to see the words on it. So you have to have something that's at least eye level for you. This thing will go way up higher than, than my head. That's a, like a backpack thing hanging there. See, that goes way up. But that's what really, the, as important as that is, it's not as important as uh, the strength of the, uh, the, the tripod. These things are really, really lightweight. They'll, they won't hold a lot of weight, they, and uh, they, sh they get shaky the more stuff you put on them, so you need this. This thing here, you can get it new probably for $100, $200, an entry-level heavy tripod. I got this at Goodwill, and I think I paid $11 for it. It was broken when I bought it, but I knew it was an expensive tripod, so I was willing to try and fix it. Luckily, I was able to find something that would work because if, if this thing, the way this was broken, if this one had been broken like that, you just throw the tripod away. You cannot fix it. And I'll show you what, what, why that is. This particular piece is called a quick release and uh, it's where you connect your camera to the top of your tripod. And the reason that you, you even need that is so that you don't have to be constantly worrying about using this little thumb screw to screw this on your camera. You can uh, put this on your camera, mount it, put the camera away with this on it, and every time you use your tripod, it's already connected. And that's what was broken on this. But fortunately, because this is a really heavy duty rig, the quick release itself was held on with a quarter inch bolt just like the quarter inch bolt that connects to the camera, which is on the other part. The other part of this, this is a two piece deal, just like this, there's a bottom and a top. This is the bottom. The top, this is the bottom. The top is actually mounted permanently onto my uh, teleprompter. And the reason for that is you gotta put it on with a screw and you have to get a screwdriver every time. And since I don't use this tripod for anything except my teleprompter, that's okay. I think I paid nine dollars for this universal quick release, very heavy duty quick release. Uh, honestly, if you go to Goodwill or a salvage store or anything and purchase a tripod, the quick release is always missing the top 
part because people sell the thing not even realizing that the quick release is still connected to the camera which is you know put away in a drawer somewhere so if you go to a goodwill or, or a salvage store and you purchase a tripod always make sure that this piece is on here with this little screw now there are exceptions i got this one at a salvation army store it's a mountaineering tripod it's uh, when I looked it up online, it was measured in ounces instead of pounds and ounces. So this thing here is designed to be ultra lightweight. It's aluminum. It has no quick release because it would just weigh more. And so what you have instead is this, uh, this mounting system here, which is really cool because you, you can put the camera at any angle you want, but you just have to screw it directly into the tripod. It makes it lightweight, easy to go hiking with. Perhaps now would be a good time to show you what's in the bag. As I said, this is a glide gear teleprompter. There's actually, when I went looking for teleprompters initially, the only thing available were uh, the kind used by the networks. And there are millions of bazillions of dollars. Actually, I think I found a used one once for like $30,000. So with the invention of the iP iPad, things have gotten a lot better. Now, the case itself is just this ballistic nylon stuff, but it's, it's really nice quality. The only problem I have with it is that this stuff here is seemingly like disposable, but you can't throw it away because without it, you can't carry this thing around. But it, the, it'll last me the rest of my life, and I guess that's really all that's important. So when you get this thing out, it's all folded up. And uh, when I bought this, I think it was about 200 bucks. And I found one that said refurbished, 100 bucks. And I've, I've learned from experience that refurbished basically, well, from a large corporation, refurbished means new. It's like they've design, redesigned and now they're trying to sell the old stuff. So instead of saying this is the old stuff, they say refurbished. But this company here is not a large corporation. It's probably a building with 20 employees. And so when it said refurbished, it really was refurbished. So anyway, here we go and take it out and we're going to open it up. Now with the, uh, when I got it, it wouldn't work. And I suspect that's why I got it refurbished because somebody had put this thing together wrong and these things here can go in different holes. Like you see that little hole right there? Well, when you uh, pull these out and fold this up, that hole switches places and a different hole comes up. That hole was down here, now it's up here and vice versa. And in mine, no matter what I did, I could not, absolutely could not get it to, to open up and work. And that's because somebody had put it together wrong. Okay, so we're gonna screw this down when you find the hole uh, that's on this frame. Screw this down, and that keeps it at a perfect angle, so you don't have to be adjusting it or anything. It just all goes together the way it's supposed to. <clears throat> but it took me a long time to figure that out. I had to watch videos over and over again trying to figure out what I was doing wrong, and I wasn't doing anything wrong. What was wrong was somebody put it together wrong. So nowadays, if you go online, you can get this for 100 bucks but I highly recommend you don't. They've redesigned the shroud, which is extremely problematic, and the new shroud looks like it's a whole lot better deal, but if you get the newer version, you're gonna pay $200. Now, this is held on with Velcro. I never take that apart. Might be part of my problem, but I just don't wanna be always trying to get that the way it's supposed to be. Your camera, is gonna to mount to this. This is the way cameras always mount on tripods. You got a, this sliding quarter inch bolt, 20 threads per inch. But when I was putting the camera on here and trying to get the camera in the bag, it just absolutely would not work. I couldn't keep the light out. And if you can't keep the light out, you can't use the thing. If any light comes in through the back, you can't see the words on the screen. So what I ended up doing is uh, taking a, a soldering iron and burn in a hole. And the reason I use a soldering iron, I kind of felt like if I just cut a hole that it would unravel. So the soldering iron melted the nylon, it wouldn't unravel. So that's what I've been using. 
and I'll get the camera out and stick it in there just so you can get an idea of how this whole thing sets up. When I first got this thing, the idea was to use my nicest camera, which I had been lusting after a camera that was $1,200 forever, and they, they went ahead and redesigned it, and they had those as refurbished for $450. And uh, after looking at it and wanting it for $1,200, I was really happy to, to pay $400, I think it's $450 to get it. But um, the, the thing with that is that camera's a real, like, semi-professional camera, so it's big. And when I put it in here, it just wouldn't fit. No matter where you put it, in order for it to be bolted to this platform, the, the lens would have to be out to about here. And so, obviously, it couldn't be used because you can't have your lens. You can't even have the lens touching this mirror because, you know, cameras, when they're focusing and all that lens is moving, and so it's got to be far enough back that it doesn't make contact, and it just wouldn't work. So I had to use one of these smaller ones, which is okay because I already owned them, and they are just as good a quality as far as I'm concerned. But when I put it in here, bolted directly to this, The, the lens was facing through the frame, but it was catching the frame. You can see in some of my videos, sometimes I won't have it mounted right, and you'll be able to see my iPad sitting there at the bottom of the, of the frame. And so what I ended up doing was getting this GoPro mount and attaching it to the camera and then attaching this to... The platform but you got to remember this has to go in here and it's really hard to get all of, all of this lined up at the same time you know you've got to get that bolt through the hole in the shroud and then you've got to get the get it started in that GoPro mount and you have to put the GoPro mount on the camera first there's no way to put the camera on after you get it stuck in there Now with this assembled, we're going to attach it to the top of the tripod. So here's the top of that quick release that I was talking about. It's, there's a screw that holds it on. I always leave it on there. there. I never use this tripod for any other gear, any other cameras. Um, me, I like to have this lever in front of me because I'm normally adjusting this thing as I'm, as I'm standing in front of it. So I've got, it, I've got it attached so that the teleprompter faces me. It's a really nice piece of gear for not having much money in it. Okay, I guess now would be a good time. We gotta level this out, and I'm gonna lower this because it seems like it's perfect for me when it's right down on top with the legs fully extended. So I'm going to adjust this so that it's pretty level. Like I say, if you get it facing up, you're going to be seeing all kinds of glare from the, from the sky. And I'll show you what this looks like on the inside. My normal subscribers are going to be really bored about this. But uh, if there's anybody out there thinking about ordering a glide gear teleprompter, which I highly recommend. I don't recommend this one because it's got this weird shroud that's like problematic. But that's what you're going to see in there. If you got your camera mounted, so you want the lens to be facing directly into the, about the center of that mirror. I'll show you what it looks like from the other side. Just a, for reflection, it's just a dark like glass. But you can see, like with the when the light's coming through, you would not be able to see the letters that are going to be in the on the front of this mirror. Just as I had to bore a hole through that shroud to make it work with this camera, here's another hack that I had to use. There, there is a drawstring on this that you're supposed to use to bunch this up. That is like completely worthless. I'm sure that whoever designed this felt miserable when they realized what a mess up it was because I'm sure they ordered like thousands of these things to be manufactured before they realized it wasn't working right. Somehow they sold them all and they, they moved on and redesigned the whole shroud deal. So, ta-da, that's how it works. Now, you, you've got to have these clothespins off 
to reach in and adjust your camera. It's really a pain. You can turn that view, you can turn the view screen to face through the mirror and then, you know, stand in front of it and see if your, your angle is level or whatnot and make slight adjustments to this and get it just right. But then you still have to go back in and turn that view screen around because if that's in there, the whole time you're talking, you're going to see that, that view screen doing whatever it's doing. You won't see the letters. And you got to be able to reach in and turn the camera on before you put your clothes pins on there. Yeah, it's a pain. And you know, it's really bad. It's like right now it's not too bad because I'm used to this. But when I first got the thing, I was like really struggling to figure out how to make this work. Now I'm going to show you something even neater. Okay. Get signed in. And on here, I've got my program. It's called Duo Prompter. We'll open that up. And uh, if, you, if you're somebody that's trying to start using a teleprompter and you've come across my video and your research, you're not going to learn enough from this to do this on your own. It's like this here program is just one of many. And of all the programs I've tried, this is the only one I could get to work with this iPod, iPad 4 thing. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, I've already loaded a script in here. And that's another thing I really struggled with is that I was loading scripts in like four or five different formats. The only thing that works is plain text. That's like the simple, no frills text. So I would make the, the uh, text documents on a really fancy program with spell check and all that kind of stuff. And then I would just say edit and select all, copy, and take it over to the teleprompter or the text message thing and or the text document and paste. And then I would copy all of that and put it into this. So the duo prompter, I'll have to show you if you, like I say, the only way I'm going to be able to teach you this stuff is if you decide to do this is for you to Skype me and just, you know, I'm not going to spend my life trying to teach somebody how to do this, but I'll go on there with you for an hour or so. But we're going to go ahead and press this just so you can see how it works out. This one's called truck. Three, two, one. And there's the words. If you notice, they're all inside out and upside down. Because remember, we're watching this through a mirror. So the mirror will turn this so that you can read it. What's important here, like I said, what really bothers me or scares me is the wind blowing this rig over. And so I make sure everything is really secure on this teleprompter before I even start doing anything. So they've got a, a lock so that even if the thing blows over, it should hold your iPad in. And I always tighten that down as good as I can get it. Because if, if this goes over, which I really hope it don't go over, I don't want that thing to end up flying out and breaking my screen or something. That's like, this was another one of those refurbished things. I got it off of Walmart. I just typed in refurbished iPad. And I paid $450 for it. So this is like a $1,200 iPad probably, or more, when it was new. Okay, so I'm going to show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this works. And I'm going to show you what it looks like through the, through the screen. Okay, now this is what you're going to see when you put this thing in here. I'll press it and get it going. There you go. Two... One, see everything there is exactly the way it's supposed to be. You can read that. You really can't see the camera. If you put your head right up against it, you can see it. You may be able to see the circle of the lens and you can see the light coming through that one little hole where I don't have a clothespin, which I usually just leave. I, I can see past that. Sometimes it'll bother me enough. I'll put another clothespin on there. I carry a bunch of them with me. But uh, 
anyways, I'll, I'll put this camera in there or turn on the camera that's in there, stand in front of that so you can see what I look like through these letters passing before the screen. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like through the screen. And uh, we'll go ahead and get it going. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to another video from the only source of information that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse, but actually enjoy it. See there, you probably can't even see. There's words scrolling past this right now. Isn't that cool? It's like magic. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I wasn't too long-winded. Like I said, you're not. if you're thinking about getting a teleprompter, hopefully this video will help you to make a decision. There's plenty of different kinds of iPad-based teleprompters out there, and even iPhone-based teleprompters. Do not get an iPhone teleprompter unless you're going to be using an iPhone. because. Uh, and I highly don't, don't recommend that because you wouldn't really have much of a screen size. It seems like you would have to be really proficient at quick reading with something like that and you'd have to be really close to the screen. With this size of an iPad it's really comfortable but you do need to make sure that whatever you get is the right size for your cameras and your and whatever you're putting your text on. Um, if you you get something like this and you start having to struggle like you come to tears over it I guarantee you I can help to get you through it. Just give me a Skype call. I'll, you can leave a message down in the comments section of this YouTube video and I will get back with you. If, if you don't hear from me, it means that YouTube didn't send me the message, so you may want to uh, click on my email. I'll put that in the description. Send me an email. All right, well, as far as I know, there's nothing else that I need to add to this video. So as always, if you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.